Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve if you're having 100% disk usage on Windows 11, or you're having high memory usage, disk, CPU usage, for example, and your fan is constantly running, perhaps, and you're noticing very slow performance on your laptop, desktop, tablet, computer. So this tutorial will apply for all major manufacturers of basically any computer that can run Windows 11. So Dell, HP, Acer, Asus, or Asus, as some people call it, Toshiba, for example. So pretty straightforward and all-encompassing video here. A lot of basic tips, but definitely things that can improve the performance of your Windows 11 computer. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So first thing we're going to do is actually open up the search icon and type in msconfig. Best match, you come back with system configuration. Go ahead and open that up. Select the startup tab and then select open task manager. So you'll notice you have a lot of apps probably in here that start up when your computer boots up and it tells you what your last BIOS time is, meaning how much time is being taken between booting the BIOS and starting up Windows. So you can see there's a lot of applications in here. I've already taken the liberty of disabling most of them, but in your case, if you've never been in here before, you're probably going to have quite a few. Generally speaking, most apps can be disabled from starting up when your computer turns on. The reason that these apps will do this is that they'll appear more responsive when you tend to open them up if you're on your computer. So if you use them a lot, if you use them every time your computer turns on, basically, then it may not be a horrible idea to have them boot up when your computer turns on. But generally speaking, this inhibits the performance of your computer, and you really don't notice much of a benefit, in my opinion, having any of these turned on except for perhaps the antivirus, which is one I would keep on. And then a lot of printers will do this too, so I usually turn off pretty much everything as you can see in here, except for the antivirus and then the VMware tools, which I do need for this machine here. So generally speaking, in order to do, disable any of them, you just would select the name application on the left here, and then select the disable button on the right. So pretty straightforward. And if you ever wanted to re-enable any of them, like for some reason you ever had a problem, you could just click on it again and then select enable. So you could come back in here. Just in my history, I don't believe I really ever come back in here or turn any applications on. Usually when I install programs, I come back in here actually to make sure that they're not turned on to start every time my computer restarts. Generally very resource hogging applications I just don't have any time for and I don't like keeping them on. No reason to. They still work. They're not disabling them from running on your computer. They just don't need to start up every time your computer starts up. So definitely something you can do there. Something else you can do as well is you open up the search menu, type in apps and features. Go ahead and open that up. Go ahead and go down the list of applications on your computer, and if you don't use any of them, you're welcome to uninstall them. A lot of Microsoft native apps, I actually do uninstall when I go through a clean install of Windows. So generally, Microsoft will reinstall them when they do major updates, so you kind of have to go back in here and check every once in a while. But they do add up. So for example, like the Feedback Hub or you know, mail and calendar, perhaps, if you don't use these native applications on your computer. You can just go click on the three-dot icon next to it for most of them and then uninstall, and then select the uninstall button. So once you've done that, go ahead and uninstall a bunch of them if you don't use them, and it also frees up space on your hard drive as well. So definitely something to look at. Something else here, too, you want to go open up the search icon, type in disk cleanup. Go ahead and open that up. And then you want to select clean up system files. And we will be clearing out the recycling bin as well as part of this process for the disk cleanup utility. So please make sure that there's nothing important in your recycling bin before we proceed. But anyway, you can keep most of these check marked in here. And something that Microsoft added, I believe, back in the Windows 8 days was the Windows Update Cleanup here. And you notice it's a really large amount of space, so about 8 gigabytes in my case here. So Windows Update, they keep installed update copies from Windows Update even after installing newer versions of updates. It deletes or compresses older versions of updates that are no longer needed and taking up space. So Microsoft, they're more than happy to let you delete the old unnecessary updates that have been superseded by newer updates. So it's a great option they've added in here. So check mark all of them honestly, anything that's recommended, and then go ahead and select OK. Select Delete.
Okay, so once that's done, something else we can try here. Actually, a few more things we're going to go through, but next thing on our list will be to open up the search icon, type in power options. Best result should come back with power options or edit power plan. So maybe you just want to type in power plan instead. So go ahead and open that up. You want to select where it says change advanced power settings. You want to select power options here at the top to go back one. You can also open this up through the control panel as well. And you want to select where it says show additional plans. Select high performance, favors performance, but may use more energy. So I usually always turn this on. If you're using a laptop though, you know, that's a little bit more questionable because you will be using more battery power. So, you know, if you have a high performance computer, like a desktop, I would definitely recommend setting this to high performance here. And if your laptop's really having problems, I would probably suggest setting it to high performance nonetheless. If you don't really care about your battery usage, then, you know, set it to high performance. If your battery is horrible as it is and you already have to keep it plugged in, basically, then don't feel bad about setting it to high performance here. So that's basically my point. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and close out of here as well. And a couple more things, too. If you want to go ahead and open up the start menu or search menu and type in performance, one of the best results should say adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Go ahead and open that up. And you want to select where it says adjust for best performance and then select apply and OK. So Windows may look slightly different. Some of the text might look a little not as clean as well. But you're welcome to change some of those individual checkboxes, turn them on and off to kind of customize it here. But that's definitely a performance booster from my experience. And now another thing we can do here as well. Open up the search menu, type in CMD. Best result should come back with command prompt. Go ahead and right click on that and select run as administrator. If you receive a user account control prompt, go ahead and select yes. And now into this elevated command line window, type in SFC, followed by a space forward slash scan now. Scan now should all be one word attached to that forward slash out front. Go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard to begin the system scan. This will take some time to run, so please be patient. Okay, so you can see it did find corrupt files and successfully repaired them. Go ahead and close out of here and restart your computer. So once that's done, one final thing we're going to round this tutorial off with will be to run a system defragmentation. So if your hard drive is a hard disk drive, it has moving parts and can be defragmented. If you're running a solid state drive, it cannot or should not be defragmented. Any application or third-party program that allows you to do that um, is probably not a program I would recommend using in general because you do not not want to defrag an SSD. They do not need to be defragmented. It's only going to put strain on your hard drive if it actually allows you to do that. Or I should say it will put strain on your solid state drive. But generally speaking, you can do it on the hard disk drive. SSDs are programs that allow you to optimize it, even the built-in Windows defragmentation utility. So I'll actually show that in today's tutorial. So just type in defrag. Best result should come back with defragment and optimized drives. Go ahead and open that up.
so in my case, it's actually showing it as a C drive, a hard disk drive, which is not good. Um, I've recently moved this machine over to a solid state drive, so I'm not going to actually defragment this. But on SSDs, it will identify it normally. Windows will identify it, and you can optimize them. But do not defragment any drives that um, are solid state drives. If it's a hard disk drive, you can defragment it. So pretty straightforward processor, guys. Again, I guess Windows hasn't recognized that I've moved it from the hard disk drive that I've installed it on, and I've moved it over since to a solid state drive, so that's probably why it's letting me do it here. Um, it's probably not made for something like that. But generally speaking, hard disk drive, you can defragment. SSD, do not, so solid state drive, do not defragment it. And then you just would click Optimize, and then just let it go through the process. And pretty straightforward. And that's about it. So pretty straightforward process, guys. Doable is able to help improve the performance and operation of your Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer. And as always, thank you for watching. And I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.